Hi everybody, it's a Draftaholics Guide to Mono White Horses. We're going to get you ready for Nationals 2017. And we've got Chifley here, who's going to tell us how this kind of rogue deck works. Yeah, so this deck is not making up a huge percentage of the metagame at the moment. Um, the key card is the Mythic Rare, Crested Sun Mare, after which the deck is named the Horse Deck. Uh, so you're trying to play a whole bunch of creatures that gain you life, that makes it really hard for any aggressive deck to beat you. And you've also got this big late game plan of generating a large number of 5-5s five repeatedly that can give you wins against decks that aren't just dead to your life gain. Okay, so let's go through some of these life gaining creatures that you've got down here. Yeah, so uh, let's start at the top actually, because I think this is one of the best ones in the deck, is the Gisela. Just the fact that it, it's got first strike means that it's going to win combat against a lot of other creatures and it gains you a large chunk of life. Then you've got the Aero Responder, which is kind of like a a baby Gisela in a lot of ways. You know, it doesn't do quite as much, but it gets in there, it gains you a bit of life. And Glory Bad Initiate is like your your good two drop against the red decks. If they don't kill it, they, they can't afford to take that four point chunk. Whereas Lone Rider isn't there so much for the life gain on the front side, but for the fact that if you do gain life, kind of like when you have the horse, you get this big payoff for having gained a chunk of life. Okay, so you've got a whole bunch of threats here. Um, you've also got some support cards as well as removal along here. Yeah, so obviously uh, you've got the best removal that White's going to let you cast in this format. So that's Cast Out and Stasis Snare for the creatures. Um, and there's not very much, if any, incidental enchantment removal rolling around sand at the moment. And so these kind of stick. These are permanent removal spells and not temporary, sometimes oblivion rings, let the stuff comes back and it's not good for you. And then always watching just lets you make your board big and really close out all those creature matchups because you guys are vigilant and are bigger than all the other creatures. So no one's going to race you when you've got a life-linking vigilant creature. Exactly. Um, so this deck, is a, it's very combo-based at the top end and, and life game based at the bottom end. So what, what are you going to win against? What, what deck is this trying to beat? Well, Mono Red is the number one deck that this is trying to beat. It's, you're hoping to get paired into it as much as possible because it's close to unlosable. Um, and there's you know, a lot of ways you can tweak this deck. Because it's kind of rogue, there's not really an established list. So you can even play some lands that gain you life, you know, which help even more in that matchup and with, with your horse tokens. But Mono Red is the number one thing you're hoping to pair against. Everything else you're kind of hoping to get there. <laughs> Okay, so so if if the whole field is mono red, you're going to do great. You cannot lose. <laughs> and if it and if it's a bit more varied, you're maybe in a bit of trouble. Yeah. So maybe we can do something about that in the sideboard. What have we got in the sideboard down here? So you've got um, you got solemnities, which are really good against team or energy. They kind of almost lock that deck out if you can land it on turn three. You know, they don't generate the energy, and then none of their cards that need to spend energy do anything. So you've got that kind of like silver bullet there. You've got some sweepers against zombies. You've got your Fumigate and your Hour of Revelation there to like sweep away the board. And you've got Gideon's Intervention, which can be used against some of the big single threats like a Glorybringer. Although not great against Glorybringer specifically, but against some of the larger threats, like against Ramp, you can, you can Glorybringer and it works out really nicely. Yeah, so you can lock out an Ulamog maybe or yeah, a exactly. Worldbreaker, something like that. And then there's some um, Fragmentizers over here. Maybe they kill off some... God Pharaoh's Gifts or something like that? Yeah, so those could come in against other cast-out decks to free things up. Um, they can also snipe Aethersphere Harvesters against decks that might have some flyers. Um, or potentially even... I'm not sure exactly what. <laughs> you know, you, you can't really get the 7-cost thing out of God Pharaoh's Gift, but you can get the gate to the afterlife mm -hmm. that brings the gift out. So that could slow them down a little bit. Yep. Um, so this deck in general, how much? how many... People, do you think will be playing this? Um, this specific deck or anything, could go anything like this. <laughs> you know, this this you could find nobody playing this, but I would expect there to be you know a couple of people who've got their own version of it. You know, some people are playing a second color that can really help you know shore up some of the weaknesses. Um, and because you're a monocolor deck with the really stable mana base currently, you you can add a second color at, at almost no cost if if you're only splashing lightly. Whether that's for some nice planeswalkers. Or some better removal. There's a whole lot of ways you could you could tweak this deck to, to suit yourself. All right, excellent. So um, thanks, Chifley. Thanks for going through this. And uh, if you love gaining life, or you are an avid equestrian, then uh, this is for you.